Good afternoon, ladies. Hey. Hello. How's How are you everybody? Doing? Good, and you? <laughs> Good. You, Kathy? We're doing great. It's nice weather outside. It's a beautiful June day. It is. It's very hot here. I don't know what's it like. We have a special guest today. Um, yep. You may notice that Angela's missing today. That's fine. She's good. Everything's good. But we have a special guest. This is my very good friend and fellow Canadian, <laughs> um, Jenny. So everybody, this is Jenny. You want to tell us a little bit about you, Sunshine? Sure. Um, I'm Jenny. I have been quilting most of my life. I own Finely Quilted in Fort McLeod, Alberta. Um, I am a APQS long arm showroom and rental program. And I own the company with my husband, Thornton, and we have two boys that are certified techs in our shop as well, as is Thornton. And it's our life. It's everything that we do. <laughs> awesome. You fit right in. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fits in. Jenny yeah. and Thornton took my very first, took me to, and Angela, took us to our very first experience in axe throwing. Yes. Mm. Do you remember? I do. <laughs> Yeah, so Angela and I were out in 2019, was it, yeah. Jen? Angela taught classes out there, and Jenny and Thornton were lovely. We had a great time, and then one night after dinner, we went axe throwing, and I'm telling you, I loved it so much that when I got home, I built an axe throwing thing out at the very back of our property, like the next weekend. Yeah, it was fun. Now I throw axes at home in my backyard. <laughs> I bet nobody messes with you. Look at that neighbor. <laughs> oh, it was fun. We had so much fun there. Um, Jenny and Thornton are lovely, lovely people. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad you're here today, hon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. I got to meet Jenny when she was on her way back from training, and we sat out on the parking lot for a couple of hours just nice, acting like we were old friends. It was beautiful. Most amazing night. I think it was more like 10 minutes. The clock just got sped ahead somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I finally looked down and went, oh, wow, it's going to be a, and you know, here's the funny thing about that, Jenny, my husband was traveling and my kids are living with me right now until I get the move out. They're moving out this weekend. Right. And, um, I didn't tell anybody where I was going because I was filming with these ladies and, uh, I didn't show up till 1130 at my house and nobody knew nothing. Nobody cared. Nobody, nothing. <laughs> You had you time. Yeah. It was like, wow, this is like, weren't you all, I looked, I would tease him the next day. I'm like, oh, weren't you all like worried that I got, you know, something happened? Hello. <laughs> They're all like, no. <laughs> no. Nope. Awesome. Yeah, it was good. Meet you. So today we're going to talk about things we wish we would have known. Yeah. Or, or things I wish. I hadn't have known mm. or things I wish people wouldn't have told me. Like, you know mm -hmm. how when you tell somebody you're going to do something and then everybody, everybody has an expert opinion on why you should or should not. And then it starts to mess with your judgment. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But better. Yeah. So let's start with Kathy. What's mm. something you wish somebody had or had not have told you or shown you or you'd have known or not known? Um, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot as I look through Facebook feeds and kind of chuckle a little bit because we ask for, quote, advice. But sometimes I think people bring it to like this thou shalt, like it's one of the Ten Commandments of quilting. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I wish people would say, hey, this is my opinion or this is the way I like to do it instead of this is the only way to do it. Exactly. One of the examples is floating versus not floating. That mm -hmm. seems to be like the hot topic and always my way is the right way. Well, there's lots of ways. Absolutely. And there's yeah. lots of ways for, for different applications in different situations as well. Right? Right. And no matter what you do, whether you partial float, whether you float, there's work involved. One is not easier than the other. They're just different. Just like folding your seams, pressing to the dark, pressing them open. They're work, but they're different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't allow the quilt police in our shop at all. Everybody's allowed an opinion and everybody's opinion matters to them. And we 
respect that and getting it done at the end of the day is what matters. Perfect. Right. Right. I just want, I wish people, that's one thing is it's, oh, it's yes. Just yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a new, um, a certification student this morning. Oh my gosh. I'm going to love working with this lady. She's four, nine and just a fireball. She watched my videos before she came. So as I'm showing her stuff, she's like 10 steps ahead of me. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then we're going to do this. I'm like, see, you got it. Right. And she started quilting. And I walked away. There was no tight grip. There was no hesitation or fear. She just, and she's back there. And then we were basting the sides and she said, well, should I go, do I need to come forward or do I start here and go backwards? I'm like, it doesn't matter. Whichever way is more comfortable for you. She said, well, which way is the right way? I said, there isn't a right way. It's whether you're comfor more comfortable going backwards to the basting that's already there or if you want to start at the basting and come towards you. It doesn't matter, Deb. You do what works for you. And I say that a lot to people with different situations. It's like, well, this will work and this will work, but do what works for you, mm -hmm. right? It's it's not law. Any of these things are not law, right? Right. A lightning bolt is not going to hit us when we're in front of our long arm. If I happen to do something worse than the other thing, if anything, I always like to joke that quilters love secrets because whenever my renters, when I teach the wiggle stitch, they're just like, Oh, it's not perfect. I'm like, and you're going to hide it with your binding. See, we quilters love secrets. <laughs> Wiggle stitch, you mean when your binding's not straight? Or, or just when your uh, basting's not straight? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. It all goes in the binding. Yeah. No, Sir Ossifer, I has not been drinking. <laughs> I've been eating. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, is we don't have to... I think it's taken a long time for some of us to say, I might ask something on Facebook or in a forum or whatever, and it's just an opinion. It's not like Jenny said, the law. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's something you wished you hadn't have known or had known way back in the beginning? Um, I actually am really grateful for a lady when we were very, my best friend and I bought our long arms. We were going to buy it together. And we, after about two weeks of investigation, realized that we needed two, not one, because we, <laughs> well, and so we went to Quilt Canada. It was being held in Edmonton. Nope, it was in Calgary. And randomly, this lady, I have no idea who she is, stopped us, and we got chatting. And she had been a professional long armor. And her advice to me was, make sure you protect your body. And I'm like, okay, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, I quilted for pro professionally for others for 15 years, and I have damaged my shoulders and my mm. posture and everything else to the point that she had to quit quilting. Oh, no. So I can tell you anything. Posture is the most important thing. So any of my renters or my people that I've sold machines to, I harp about posture. Like, keep, mm -hmm. get that machine to the right height. You know, make sure that mm -hmm. you're, you're taking care of your body have good shoes on, and when your shoulders are sore, listen, figure out why they're sore, change what needs to be changed so that in 15 years, you have another 15 years to quilt. Right. That's good. I've never actually even thought about, I mean, I, I think about the height, but that I'm thinking in terms of comfort, not in terms of like saving anything for down, right. down the road, you know what I mean? But that's a, that was good advice. I always tell everybody to make sure their ears are over their shoulders, that we're not hunching over. It doesn't have to be a whole big thing. It just has to be, this has to be kind of a little bit in the way instead of like way C forward or, you know what I mean, kind of thing. Because that's when we, just a simple, because I used to be a massage therapist in my other world. And one of the things that we, one of the classes on Continue Ed I went to was just talking about if you just bring this back, this opens up and like this was a big deal opening up your shoulders was a big deal for jenny and i are both sitting here doing it while you're talking <laughs> unconsciously i'm like oh dear oh my posture's really bad <laughs> 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 
I am really bad too. And I get hunched over. It's just to stop and to stretch a little bit. Yeah. But this whole, it was back in like Shakespearean time that somebody thought about this to it be to project when you're like this, you can't project, but when you're like this, you can open up your lungs and you project more. So this just posture is really simple. Get the ears just a little bit back. It doesn't have to be like way back. Yeah. And it's your ears, not the top of your head. And that's, <laughs> that's that kind of thing. It's not the top of your head. It's your ears, which is a whole it's nother. My ears. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. So if you got big, big ears, then you don't have to put your head back so far. There you go. But it is just, it's a simple, it's just simple. Nope. Just try to relax a little bit and not bend over. Not, we're not the hunchback of Notre Dame working on our quilts, which I can be in a nanosecond. So I am just as guilty because I get all tense and I, then I try to let loose. And that's why I think music and dancing is a good thing sometimes in front of your long arm. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that I wish somebody hadn't told me is necessarily is pantographs. When I got my machine, I had, um, I had some pantographs and had used them, but my girlfriend and I both started out free motion quilting. And then we both got hooked on pantographs and didn't keep developing our free motion and then got to the point that we were both intimidated by it and literally down the road had to stop and say, okay, we started this, we can do it and focus on developing those skills again, where we started that way and the pantograph got in our way. Mm, mm. That's fabulous. It's true though. I think you, you get, you get reliant because you know, you know exactly how a pantograph is going to look at the end of the quilt because it's all there in front of you and you're just following the same lines. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it gets that becomes a comfort zone. Well, and you don't have to think it's mechanical. Mm. Like, I'm going to do this and I can follow this little line and I don't have to think about it really, you know, and yeah, it's uh, it became a crutch for for me. But did you not find, Jenny, that doing pantograph because I tell people all the time, pantographs and doing pantographs, you're still getting muscle memory with shapes. Absolutely. You just have to be willing to or realize that you can jump from the skills that the pantographs are giving you by making all those shapes to go to the front. You don't have a little red light to follow, but you're learning muscle memory for certain shapes. I'm not against the pantograph at by all. By using, uh, oh no, I know that, yeah. I became, intimidated, like, I became intimidated with free motion. Right. And just relied on my pantographs instead of using right. what I knew I could do and do it. And you had the skills all the time, the I whole time. I did. What movie's that from? You yeah. had it. You had it in you the whole time. Was it Wizard mm -hmm. of Oz? Oh, to go home. Yes, Wizard of Oz. Dorothy. You've always had the power. Just click my heels. <laughs> There's no place like the front of the machine. There's no <laughs> place like the front of the machine. Ooh, another T-shirt. Another <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> So Tracy, what were some of your do's and don'ts? Um, I think in the beginning, I didn't start out with an APQS machine. I started out with a different brand of long arm. Um, and again, there was no internet or any of those things. And I, I started at the front of the machine because that's, I started with like a Janome 1600 on a little wooden grace frame which mm. I refer to as T-Rex quilting because you can't go forward and backwards at all because you've only got this much space. So you're just kind of like doing this, right? And <laughs> when I got my first long arm, I was still doing that. And then I realized, what? Oh, no. <laughs> it's like the yeah. Wednesday Adams dance. There you go. <laughs> that's what I should, there, that's my new thing. It's, it's the Wednesday Adams dance, not T-Rex quilting. Um, so I, I worked from the front for quite a while and then started using pantographs, but I didn't understand with pantographs that you don't go super slow. You don't try to hang on that guideline verbatim with a death grip. I had to teach myself and I say that in all of my videos, I teach all my people, the less grip you've got on that machine the looser everything's going to be and the more control you'll have. 
if you're holding on like this for dear life and those knuckles are white, you're not making any nice smooth shapes. So you got to loosen it up. But it took me a while to understand that, oh, I don't have to stay on that pantograph line the whole time. It actually looks better if I don't. Mm -hmm. I can choose it as a guide, right? And I, I didn't know that. I had to learn that. Uh, and it would have made pantographs a lot easier if I'd have known that out of the gate, right? Because I, I kept looking at my work thinking, well, it looks like a three-year-old did it, you know? So well, I would just go back to the front of the machine because I was good there, right? <laughs> and then once I got the hang, and then pantographs just became almost a staple because it was just when I was quilting for other people, it was, it just worked out. But yeah. I also tell everybody not to worry if you go off the line. Nobody's going to take a pantograph. And if you put the quilt in the show and put the pantograph next to it and say, see here is where they made a mistake. And if they do, they don't deserve that quilt. <laughs> oh, they're not their friends. They need to. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I like pantographs, though. They serve they serve their purpose. They're, they're great. If you love using them, use them. If you don't want to ever use them, don't ever use them. It's, it's a personal thing, right? But you should try once and see. Oh, of course. You should try all the things. I mean, I'm forever trying to get people, you know, don't use one cone of thread, one type of thread. Use them all. <laughs> right. Use them all, you know? So. And you, so that was what you wish they wouldn't have said, right? Or what's that? I can't remember now. See, it was just that 30 seconds ago and I've already lost track. I've actually forgotten. <laughs> but that's okay. That's, I can't even remember why I started talking about that. So it's okay. So I think mine was more of what I don't wish people wouldn't have said to me, you know, you have to float or not float. The one thing that I, um, and in starting a bigger business and starting a business in my my basement and then moving to a bigger business. One of the best pieces of advice I got is to go to the local university or college and business school and ask them to help you with what all the forms that need to be filled out and get some business advice from those kids who are going through school because they do one consultation for free. And it was fabulous just to walk in there, unbiased opinion, this is what you should do, this, 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 and this, and you're going to need this, and then kind of sent me out the door. It was, it was fabulous. Well, that's good. I didn't do any of those things. I just <laughs> found a, I just found a spot, signed a lease, and, <laughs> and moved my stuff in. <laughs> well, figured it all out as I, as I went, which is how I basically live my life. You know, just jump in. You'll figure, you'll find out how deep it is once you're in there. Well, we kind of jumped in. I mean, I've just something I've never done before, but there were some legal hoops that I had to go through that I have, I had to have X, Y, and Z. So in order for that help, that's where I went kind of thing. So I was kind of directed by the, by the laws in Nebraska. So it was good. Right. Um, another thing is, you know, I started at home, like mm -hmm. we did, and quickly realized that it was invading my space. Mm. So make sure you're like, if you want to have a business, you know what that's going to entail. If you don't want to have a business, you need to learn how to say no. Yes. A big N-O exclamation point. And it's okay. Are you, are you talking about your customers that buy the machine with the specific intention of wanting it to be a hobby? Yes. And then they have their friends and their family wanting them to turn it into a business and they don't want to. Exactly. Yeah a lot oh all the time when i sell someone a machine they're like oh i don't think i could make a business out of it. i said you do whatever you want with this machine i said but if you don't want to do a business stick to your guns because it the first time you say to somebody oh sure i'll quilt that cool for you and you do it they've got friends because quilters travel in packs yes <laughs> yes right birds and, birds and before you know it mm -hmm. Now you're quilting for other people mm -hmm. and it can get away from you. So if you do want to keep it a hobby, absolutely stick to having it as a hobby. I have a lady that purchased a machine for her retirement and she thought it would be a side gig. And she messaged me the other day and she said, I am busier now than when I had a full-time job. What happened? <laughs> I'm like, 
it didn't say no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to realize that no is not a bad word. Exactly. No. It's a, you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you will get, you will have a bunch of friends that you didn't really know you had <laughs> until you get a long arm in your, in your house. That's the other thing too. If you're working from home, the way my situation was customers never came to my house because I worked at the quilt shop. Mm -hmm. So I would, my customers were dropping off and picking up at the shop. I'd even meet them there on my day off and they drop and I would take it home. But for somebody who doesn't have an option like that, if you're running a business out of your home in your basement or whatever, you're going to have people coming in and out of your house. Are you okay with that? And as your customer base grows, they're not all going to be friends and family that you know. They're going to be people you've never met before. Are you comfortable with that? I met everybody at a coffee shop. Oh. Ooh, like a dealer or something. Yes, I did. I met them at a local coffee shop because I wanted to protect, because I had little people and my house is never, you know, little people have little things all over all the time and a dog and, you know, and I, I mean, I keep all of my customer, I would keep all of my customer quilts away from our dog for sure. I'm very conscious of, you know, allergies and things like that, but I just still wanted to keep my, my house still private. So I met at a coffee shop always. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, thing to do. And if I'd known in the beginning, all the wonderful women and friends and quilters that I had the journey, I just started it a long time before I did. Yes. Because that has been amazing. And I was talking with my husband this morning about the amazing relationships that we have developed and friendships, lifelong friendships that we wouldn't have had if it wasn't for quilting. Mm -hmm. The thread that binds all of us together, right? Yeah. I was in the grocery store and this lady walked by me. I'm like, oh, you quilt. And she's like, how did you know? I'm like, your thread collection on your shirt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Wear it everywhere we go. Right. We do. It, I also find it very interesting. I don't know if this has happened to you, but several times i'll have people that are quilting and they'll look up and go oh and in, in my renter in my rental program and they look up and they go i didn't know you quilted oh my gosh how's how so and so doing their kids went to kindergarten all the way to the high school and they never knew each other quilted yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah pretty fun that's cool so moving forward what would be you think your most valuable advice like besides what we talked about a little bit more of I don't know. You wish it was shouted from the rooftops a little bit more. <laughs> Let's ask Jenny that question first. What okay. advice would you give, hon? Um, that there is room in quilting for everybody. Yes. And we can all we can all do this. There is more piecers and more piecing happening every day than all the quilters combined can do. Mm -hmm. Like and we can all still be friends and be quilters. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. That's very true. Fabulous. That's very true. Hey, Tracy. My advice is to go easy on yourself. Mm. Cut yourself some slack. Be patient with your learning curve and the process. And don't turn it into some masochistic exercise where <laughs> everything you do gives you an opportunity to beat yourself up emotionally <laughs> and right. question all your life decisions. Yeah. It's quilting. It's go right. easy. Go, go easy and enjoy the process because this is all supposed to be fun at the end of the day and enjoyable. So just let it happen. Yeah. That's well, that was we're gonna be. That's where I was kind of headed a little bit. Just to trust the process, trust yourself, and enjoy the journey because the journey is fabulous. It takes us. I feel like our path every day leads in a different way than what I think it's gonna be, and it's such a glorious journey. 
It is. It's lots of fun. All aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Another thing, um, I took a Judy Niemeyer course and I'm actually a certified shop, but. Oh, yeah. You need to tell us about that, please. I yes. Really, when she um, was teaching, one of the, one of the gals made a mistake and w there was tears and as quilters, we know the tears that happen and whatever. And Judy just stopped and said, it's fabric and paper and they make more every day. It's not the end of the world. Yes. And we put our hearts and souls into these quilts, but at the end of the day, it's fabric and thread and they do make more every day as we know by our stash. <laughs> yeah. That grows all by its own self. Uh, no help. Right. Yeah. It's magical. It's like <laughs> rabbits. <laughs> Better than rabbits, actually. <laughs> yeah. That is that is a fabulous because that's what I that's the one thing I love about being um, having a long arm rental program is to be the encourager to say, hey, you got this. We can help you with this. You got it. You got it. Cheerleader, rah, 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 go. This is going to look fabulous and just have fun. Mm -hmm. I get so excited when they get it. That lady that was here this morning, I said to her after row two, I'm like, you are a freaking rock star. She looked at me. She goes, you say that to everybody. I'm like, uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. But she just gets it. You know, some people are just natural and other people take a little time to warm up whatever whatever person you are and however you work and however you progress is completely individual um but the biggest thing is she was having so much fun like she was just joyous the whole time she was here she was smiling and laughing and just back there doing her thing you know no fear that whole we've talked about that um before in other um in other chats this lady her name's deborah by the way um, no fear at all of any of it, of the machine, of her stitches. She did not come to the front and start picking it apart. Oh, good. And that's encouraging to us and re-energizes yeah. us. Yes, because that's usually the first thing. They come around the front and they go, oh, and they start, and I'm like, ah, stop. She didn't. She come around the front. She goes, well, that doesn't look too bad. <laughs> oh, it looks awesome. <laughs> She was great. Yeah. So I love when they skip out the store after their certification class. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So Jenny, going back to that Judy Niemeyer stuff, you teach that, don't you? You're a certified instructor. I'm not a certified instructor. I'm a certified shop, which means oh. kind of the same thing. It's just two different, two different sides of her company. And so as a certified shop, I teach, um, I can't go, I'm not supposed to go out and teach in other businesses. Mm. I, in my shop where a certified instructor can teach anywhere is the, okay. is the big difference. But so, you, you teach the Judy Niemeyer stuff there? Yes, I do. I might have to get on aerial plane because I really don't like paper piecing. Come on out. You owe me a holiday anyway. You were supposed to bring your girl back to come to Waterton. I was. Where? She's she's moving to Ottawa. Oh, um, I'm sorry. For well, for university. My smarty pants. She's uh, taking uh, criminology, psychology, law, mm -hmm. forensics. Yeah, she's really smart. So she's um, she's actually going to go to school this time because she had to do her first two years Zoom because of okay. it, um, and then she took a year off. And she's been working full time saved every penny so yeah so she's leaving at mid-august i'm very happy for her <laughs> very happy for us my baby right. i'm very happy for her <laughs> i'm very excited for her though um yeah so i don't know if she'll be able to come with me but i'd sure love to come we'll go axe throwing again okay can i come absolutely <laughs> Have you ever thrown axes, Kathy? No. Oh. Axe throwing. It intrigues me, though. It's it's wonderful. It's a lot of fun. I will tell anybody who hasn't done it who will do it, though, you don't have to rifle it as hard as you think. 
I threw my first one and the, the guy was like, whoa, whoa, back up there. You, <laughs> you don't have to put it through the board. <laughs> I threw it too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. We had lots of fun. <laughs> we did. It was really good. <laughs> was Arthur Angela's axe that bounced off the target? I think both. I think both of our axes bounced bounced off at some points, and then, and we have video of it somewhere. Ew. He got a bullseye, and then I threw it, and I got a bullseye, like one after another. <laughs> we were both I, like, yep. "Like that's never going to happen again." <laughs> but it was good. Yeah, yeah, it's lots of fun. I don't know. Do they have those there? Do they yeah. have those in the states? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a good activity. Yeah, you should try it. I still don't understand how they serve alcohol in an establishment that it has people throwing axes, but hey, no judgment. <laughs> There's lots of things that I wonder what could happen in certain places. That's so all good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would recommend throwing axes sober. Okay. Yeah. I would just, it would be fun. I think it was, we're, yeah, that's kind of the fun thing that would be up my alley with my kids, my big kids who are married and stuff, and even my kids who are not. So it would be good. Yeah. It's addicting. It is addicting. I just need to get back to see some beautiful mountains because they ain't here. <laughs> Come on up. Anytime. I got the room. I got the beds. You're welcome. I'd have to bring the bash mobile up that way someday. It's not that far. I just drove it. I know you are rock star. Yes. Yes. The scenery where you live is breathtaking. Yes. I mean, I Canada think. as a whole is a really beautiful country, mm -hmm. but I've never been that close to mountains. And remember when we went to that, um, where did you take us? You guys, we got hot dogs. It was, it was that big resort place where I got in the water with my feet. Yes, I shouldn't have done that. No, you shouldn't have done that. Waterton National Park, and you were in Glacier Lake, right in the mountain valley. Yeah, I took my shoes off and got in it. Yeah, and it was ice cold. And she yeah. tried to jump right back out, and I'm like, no, no, I have to you in the lake, so stay there. And she was freezing. <laughs> it was incredible, though. Just, yeah. it was oh. I still remember it. And I still remember it almost like almost brought me like it, it did. I think at one point brought me to tears. It was so beautiful there that it, it is. was just the most glorious, all of it. Well, I still have that mountain photo with the lake is still the screensaver on my laptop. Mm. That picture I took. Yeah. I love that photo. And I put them in my car and I drove them to where there was no cell service. And Angela's like, I have to work while I'm here. I'm like, yeah, not today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was great. It was a great day. It's a good thing to turn off cell service or to not have it. It doesn't hurt us at all. Not at all. Right. Even the podcast can wait for people. <laughs> we'll be here when you get back. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Jenny, any other advice you've you've got or any experiences you want to share? There's not an age limit to machine quilting. My, well, my eight-year-old granddaughter, she started machine quilting when she was two with great supervision beside mm -hmm. her. But this Christmas, she just quilted her brother's quilt for his, his big boy bed. Aww. And quilter is over 80. And I love her to death too. And everybody in between, there is no bounds, no boundaries on quilting. Nothing, right? Um, All are I, welcome. All are welcome. All. My five-year-old granddaughter, she was having a really rough day the other day. And she come in and she just looked at me. And she said, Grandma, I just need to quilt. Can I please just quilt? I need to quilt. And I'm like, I get it. And so we put a play cloth on. And she actually was the little girl that was pictured on the APQS um, page a couple weeks ago, about a month ago. The little girl that was quilting in my shop, that was her. And she... She just knew that it would make her feel better if she quilted. I think there's something beautiful about those machines too. My little grandson, when he was, you know, just walking, would come up and play with the big old bolts on the, like the bolts on the bottom. 
intrigued him and he just loved the machine. And anytime he could just go over there and touch that machine. That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. But also Melanie, Melanie quilted when she was six. And then she was done. <laughs> and yeah. so that's how it is. Yep. Yeah. But she tried it. Yeah. Maybe the seed will plant someday. Like my mom with paper pieces. She did two projects. The last one she sewed through her finger. And I'm like, no, you're done. No more. Oh. No more. How? Oh, is she okay? She was fine. And there was no blood. It huh. went through the pad of her thumb, but just caught. But there was no, you probably don't want this in here. <laughs> <There> was, <laughs> That's my, we're having everybody, everybody in the audience right now is grabbing their thumbs. <laughs> trigger <laughs> warning, trigger <laughs> warning. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? Yeah. Tell he your saw, story. Thornton came and took the machine. The, he took he took the needle right out and took her it out of her thumb and it was all good. But yeah. Aww. Wow. Her. None. Oh my goodness! I paper pieced twice, many many years ago. The second time I paper pieced was just to confirm. <laughs> or debunk that I hated it as much as I thought I did. And I, you know what? I don't think it's the paper piecing part that I really didn't like. It was the paper afterwards. And I've since learned that you can wet it and the paper disappears faster than this and the thread stays wet, all those things. But I think it was such a horrible experience. The first two times I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I tried it. I'm good. But I love the look of it. Mm-hmm. Like when I see those quilts, mm -hmm. you can tell when something's paper pieced and they're always stunning and as close to perfect, That's going true. back to last week's podcast, mm -hmm. they're as close to perfect as you can get in an imperfect, perfectly imperfect right. medium. Um, but I have no desire to, to, do to do it. I don't have the patience, but... I admire those who do. And I'm looking at that quilt behind you. Oh, did you think that? I did. Yeah, I started him in Cabo um, in 2017 and finished him last fall. It's stunning. I love yeah. the orange. I was going to comment. I love the background being mm -hmm. orange. I wanted him to look like he was coming out of the rising sun. And that's where my, my thought process was with that. Well, and you I, nailed it because he looks like he's got a blazing sunset behind him. Yes. And you quilted it. It looks like it's it's heat wave. Heat wave? Is it all over? Yep. I did all over. Yeah. I can see it when I look. It's beautiful. I was going to do, um, I was going to custom him, but it was another conversation in the shop of not every quilt has to be custom. No. And a lot yeah. of my my paper piece, um, I do edge to edge on them because my really good friend, he does a lot of custom work and does beautiful work. But then we had mine and his hanging side by side in the shop and standing back because they're so busy, you couldn't tell the difference. There you go. And I had so many ladies that didn't want to do a Judy because they couldn't afford to paper uh, to custom. And so then like we did that and most of mine are edge to edge. It's beautiful though, because the whole thing, whether you would have seen the custom quilting or not, I think the texture just adds that one other layer, but still the very first thing you're seeing is that big, beautiful, majestic elephant. Yeah. The quilting is an after thing, mm -hmm. which with those kind of quilts is the way it should be, right? Right. right. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And I love how the, that pattern makes his skin look wrinkly. Yeah. And it, oh, yes. And the orange yeah. it makes heat waves. What thread did you use? I used Glide. Okay. Cool gray three. Yay. Yep. Cool gray three. One of my faves. Using it right now. It's on my machine right now. <laughs> yeah. That's a good color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just, and that one has triple bat in it. Oh, so layer of hobs, and then two layers of poly that I had laying around that was driving me crazy, and so that's why it gives such definition on it. It is so heavy, but 
triple batting. <laughs> That's taking it to another level. Wow. I love it. See, and there's I'll, another rule. It was, doesn't matter how much batting you put in your quilt. You can no. put as much as you want. You can. There's no And I like a heavy quilt. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's never actually made it to our bed because it's been hanging so people can see it. It's beautiful. It's triple batting. That's going to be my next thing, man. <laughs> it's just, like it makes it really stiff. That quilt is heavy and stiff, but. For a wall hanging, it's fabulous. The visual effect I want, it, it has. Right. I mean, right. Not every, that's the thing about when you're talking to people that that thick of that dense of quilting, what it can do versus looser fun. I mean, I think that's awesome that you just gave everybody permission to edge to edge a Judy Niemeyer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cause and I encourage them to do their own. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, again, there's, again, there's no, there's no rule to all of this stuff. Yeah. What do you think, Trace? I totally agree. I, I, I love that you did an edge to edge on that because it's hard to, it, it is hard to convince people or not convince, but it's hard to make people understand that that is going to look even better with an edge to edge than it would if you went to the time, the money, all the all the other stuff with custom quilting at all. Because at the end of the day, with something like that, you want that to be the shine. Yeah. Right. So, so I think you guys are saving me. I think you guys are saving me. I have a quilt that my one of my employees is going to do. You have you heard of legit kits? Those are beautiful kits. Oh. Legit kits, another paper piecing thing, but they're very unique and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little pieces that alligator she had an alligator um but there's one that i the ones that i know are like an eagle and there's a car and there's a beautiful motorcycle tracy you should see that one yes I and, then, and and the one that my my employee wants me to quilt is omg david yes Ew, David! <laughs> my favorite show ever! So I am thinking now that you, I see that behind you, that maybe I might be talking to her about something like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that would is it be... Work? Like, is it the letters? Like, almost like a pixel quilt? No. It's of the statue of David. Oh, I thought you meant David Rose from Schitt's Creek. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, I sorry. I take back everything I just did about the Ooh David. That's from the shit screen. So, no. it's, sorry. Isn't that David quilt double sided too? So you have both sides of the statue. And everybody's teasing me, going, "How are you going to quilt that?" And I'm like, "Now I know, right there." <laughs> We're going to get think, a beautiful. I think background. an edge to edge would be great on that. Yeah. Well, and now it's giving me a great idea with a um, triple bat too. And even that, maybe doing the design the other way, but I mean, there'd be something that would be fabulous to think about. Again, it gets my brain thinking outside the box because everybody's like, oh, you should custom quilt this. And now I'm like, oh, can you do me a favor, Jenny? And can you text me that picture for me? Of your quilt? Yep. Because I think it's a beautiful proof of, hey, look, this is, and especially on some of those more intricate like you said piecing yeah but you don't you don't have to put a design different in every little piece and every little fabric color it could be something all over well and my border if you look there's points missing all over the place um it was made up as i went on the fly and it is perfect for me and i love it perfectly perfect imperfect perfect is hmm? perfect because it's handmade yes all right. We are Never probably got a, pardon? Ever to be duplicated. <laughs> right. It's a one of a kind. There'll never be another one like that ever. It can right. come. It won't be the same. Nope. All right. 
Well, that leads us to the end of our show already. Can you believe that, ladies? Wow. Time flies. When you're having fun. Time flies. Good. Well, thank you, Jenny, for being our special guest. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it so much. Oh, always. Like I said, this quilting world is fabulous. So I'm so, I'm glad. so glad you were here today, Jenny. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. All righty. Bye, guys. See you. Bye, everyone.